welcome by the Arcade Saga. My name is Ilkio Miusma and today we have another, I think, very special video for you guys. This is another care collaboration and with quite some um, um, channels, some newer channels, some older channels, some very famous channels who are uh, going to share their information about how they grow the cycle in their environment. And uh, I almost uh, every time forget that I am growing my orchids in the Netherlands. So you have a, a bit of an idea where uh, how my climate is. It's basically, um, most of the time, yeah, it's fairly wet, uh, not that warm, and can be quite cold. So we uh, get a lot of um, yeah, rain, damp uh, conditions. And I'm also uh, living uh, basically near the sea. So, uh, in my case, I like it because the humidity in my growing space thereby uh, is a little bit uh, more up than when you go uh, more land inwards, I think I could say. So, uh, I, uh, it's, for me it's beneficial, but uh, yeah, I have to uh, warm up uh, quite a lot in, in winter in the greenhouse in the orchid room. So, that's, uh, but it's, that's a little bit my uh, climate here. But like I said, we're going to talk about the Cygopetalum and before I start talking about how I give them uh, my care, uh, I first would like to mention the other uh, participants for this care collaboration. So and here we go, uh, we have uh, Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents, Plants and Other Things, Michelle's Lives on Repeat, Attainable Green, Orchids and Finboss, Nicole Diana, Trish Argot and Plant Life, Roger Argots, April's Argots and Plants, and Ninja Argots. So I'm really, really happy that I uh, could join in on this, uh, this care club. I think there are, are some very uh, respectful growers out there. Um, that not always means, I don't not always mean about that, that uh, the respectful growers are the ones who have a channel for a longer time because the newer ones are uh, people uh, who also have their orchids and not always are just starting growing orchids. So, uh, yeah, I'm really going to, to look them up uh, because I come across new channels as well as, as you guys uh, will do. And I think that's the beauty of the Care, care Collapse. And uh, I'm really trying to um, be one of the care, collaborator, care collaborators uh, when I can, when I have the orchid. And I have cybopetalums, so uh, therefore I could join in on this one. And they are standing next to me on this shelf. I will uh, introduce them to you uh, pretty soon. But I also have wrote down some things that I uh, uh, would uh, like to talk about that's underneath the camera. So uh, that's why I look down sometimes. Just to ha I have some reminders there. Um, but yeah, the psychopedal is for me um, not the easiest one, I have to admit. Um, that depends, but most cases there are, uh, like the uh, Meltoniopsis uh, in the background, uh, sorry, this, uh, this side, uh, are listed uh, as, as orchids that can be kind of finicky to, to get started. I must admit, I killed quite a lot of Meltoniopsis. I, uh, I should knock on wood, I didn't kill a Saigo so far, so that's, that's, that's okay, but you, you will see my older one is uh, uh, above here, my, my first one, it's not in the best conditions um, at the moment, it's really um, um, getting uh, to, to a good healthy grow habit again. But it struggled a lot, not because it's a bad plant, uh, because I didn't know what I was doing, I really need to needed to find a way uh, to grow my orchids very well, suited um, by me as a grower, but also with the orchids uh, themselves. And I think we are on, on a right path, but uh, yeah, that's why they do not look as good as they should. But um, yeah, first of all, I would uh, like to mention the a, a light situation. When I started growing the cycles, uh, I thought, I don't know where I did get it from, that they uh, didn't like as much light. Uh, but that's not true, in my, in my opinion, uh, because I, I could get them to grow, but now I really, um, yeah, quite often have them, uh, when they're making new uh, canes, new bulbs, they, uh, they start their flower spikes, and before that, not all of my cybers uh, did bloom. But now, now when I give them more light, uh, quite bright light, I think um, 
a little less bright as a cattleya. So if you have, if you grow cattleyas uh, quite successfully, uh, you probably understand where I'm going uh, uh, light-wise with this. It's very hard to explain, but uh, I try, I will try to show it how much light they uh, they get here in in a minute. But uh, quite bright, but filtered light. They, uh, I had them. Uh, a few months ago, I, did, I still grew them in my uh, greenhouse. They are now uh, in my, uh, yeah, in my uh, arctic room, I call it. They do get a little bit less light than, than before. And I, um, in the greenhouse, they, they did get a, a bit of too much light. They started to get the, those pale leaves. And for example, this one was uh, one of them. And I see now, I didn't notice. Yeah, I noticed the blooms on this one, don't get me wrong, but it's started uh, blooming on this spike already. Yesterday it wasn't open yet, so uh, that's nice for this video. But um, the, uh, the leaves uh, turned uh, almost yellowish and now luckily they started uh, greening up again. I think they, this color is okay. But um, yeah, they did receive a little bit too much light uh, in the greenhouse. So now I have it a little bit more filtered. And I always, um, when they got, get direct sunlight, not direct sunlight, but quite bright light, I check the leaves. I just, I just uh, grab them, feel if they really are warm or not. This one uh, had some bright light on it, but I can f cannot feel anything uh, that would be too warm. I will try to show you uh, how I, uh, where, the, where the window is, but if I do that, the orchids will turn up quite dark because the, the backlight is very strong. So therefore I have my camera a little bit sideways, so we have the light uh, on me and on my orchids, but um, and I'm growing them now for three years, I think. Yeah, about three years. Um, yeah, on top of my head, maybe a little bit longer. Um, I uh, feed wise, um, they get um, they get feed, but not much, and that is something that I generally do for my orchids. Uh, I, I do not make up se separate uh, portions of feed, if you get what I mean, uh, because um, that would be too much work. So, so I have different kind of genera of orchids in my green in greenhouse and uh, my orchid room, uh, but they uh, they get basically the same, with an exception from the Miltoniopsis. They uh, get um, oral water, almost pure oral water. I always pH it down. And uh, that's something uh, Michael McCarthy uh, to, uh, yeah, noticed me, uh, uh, give a comment on that I said I never, no, no not never, but I uh, sometimes give pure or all water. Uh, and he's right, I, I'm basically not doing that because I always pH it down. So my uh, all water has a pH around 7, I think, too high for my, uh, for my liking. I like to uh, pH it down a little bit. Uh, around 6 to 6.5 and uh, so I always do that but that's my pure os uh, osmosis water that uh, I will give uh, to my Miltoniopsis uh, uh, a little bit more often but um, I always keep track of the reservoirs which I will uh, demonstrate in this video as well it's that is just how I grow my orchid this is uh, basically my, my I made a video about it uh, my um, customized self-watering as I uh, call it because I didn't see any grower on YouTube yet who grows the same same way uh, of course uh, self-watering but I do not flush um, and I do not uh, rarely do flush the parts of my zygos as well and that's okay because I grow them now for uh, at least two years like this and it works as long as you keep an eye on your reservoir but that, by that I mean don't let that pH go down too much. You may think I use inorganic media uh, and first it starts to rise the pH but after about six months I found that if you don't flush it starts to go down rapidly. And that is something that this uh, first cycle had to cope with. And uh, you will lose roots, trust me, and quite quickly if you go around 5 or even lower pH wise those roots go downhill quite quickly. I uh, found out the hard way. I'm luckily, I, I'm happy that I did found it out because now I found a way that I can, I can work with it. Um, but yeah, I, I had to learn the hard way. Poor plant, but it did survive. So uh, that's beautiful, I think. 
So the actual feed lays around, in summer for, for my arc, it's around 100 to 130 ppm parts per million. Uh, I use different kinds of fertilizers. I will make a video on the fertilizer itself. Uh, it's a time issue. I keep mentioning this uh, more often in my videos, in my care collapse. Um, I didn't have the time uh, yet, but it will be soon on my channel, so you have a general idea. And I think I can make a general video about the feeding because they basically all get the same. So that that's, would be nice to have that video out there so I can link it and people can see if you are interested. That was a subject and it still is a subject that I'm, that I'm very interested in. Even though I now find a method that I'm, uh, that I'm happy with, so I don't want to change it too much. You never know if you start to use a new product, which may work for somebody in a different climate that not always will work for you. So once you have a sort of winning team, yeah, you may not want to change it too much or too often. But on the other hand, I like to experiment. But I think I have a nice balance going on because my, my Arcus are, are mainly, and uh, quite a lot of them doing very well uh, since I keep a record of the uh, reservoir. And I will show you the notes if you are interested in it. Um, something to mention is that I, I grow mine, in, uh, like I said, in self-watering, but um, the time that I need to get uh, used to the self-watering is kind of rough. Um, maybe for a cycle, maybe the roughest period I experienced when I transfer a orchid into self-watering. I see a lot of uh, unhappiness <laughs> in my cycles for the first um, two months, maybe three months. After that, once they are going, they are going. And, and they are starting to bloom, re-bloom, are be, uh, being very happy. But uh, yeah, they are kind of finicky on the repotting side and uh, I will show you two of them who are uh, quite, kind of recently uh, repotted but what happened is both of them were very nice beautiful strong orchids with a lot of roots that is basically very good of course that's a healthy plant but probably all those roots will die off especially with the psycho it's very hard to get the media out I take all of it out with the risk losing all of those roots because I had some experience with bush snails and I'm over it. I'm doing it, I, I know I set them back, but I take it, I, take a, I try to give them as much good care as I can and like I said, I, I should knock on wood, but I didn't lose them, so I know I, they will, will survive, they will cope with it, they will start again, but yeah, on a cycle it's the roughest part path that I experience with all of my orchids. The cycles do take it uh, hard. Yes, So, uh, but I will, uh, will show it to you guys what I mean by that. I use trans transparent pots. I like to watch my roots uh, myself as a grower. I just, uh, just like it. And for now, for the videos, it's very handy as well. So I can show you what, uh, basically uh, give you an idea what's happening inside of the pot. So I think that's very curious to see because there are they have very strong, thick, almost fleshy roots that I really like. Once they are growing, they are growing and they are not afraid to make some roots. So that's very nice. So I think that we, the, uh, let's do that now and then we will also uh, have a look at the reservoir and I will take uh, my notes and then go from there. So I put it, I put all my uh, zygos on the table and I think you can see it in the, but I have five at this moment. Um, actually two of them are quite recent bought, well one I have now about two months in my collection and one was fairly new and I think I have it already uh, on my channel. Uh, to be completely honest at this stage, uh, I, I'm not completely sure but it will be there uh, pretty soon where I film how I did a repot on that cycle. It's a beautiful one with, with almost white blooms. So that one is uh, really the newest one, it's the one in, in the back here there in the back <laughs> and this is my first one this is a gift of my mom so it's a very special plant for me this one oh this one did, had a rough time but it see did survive but i had to learn so so much so therefore you can see that's what i talked uh, explained in the uh, in the intro and the start of this video you can see the bulbs are uh, this one is uh, from last uh, last year or 
yeah, less year, I think, less growth, I should say. It's a very um, small in comparison to the rest of them. It's now making, uh, working on a new growth here. Uh, I'm hoping this one will bloom, but in my experience, this one does um, show the spike a little later than the than the, the rest so far. I have this is the Lucian Dorf, my second one, and this is the third one. This is actually a cross. Let me grab it. It's a uh, yeah, it's called a, a Propetalium Golden Bay. It's a cross with a with a sigo. And it's very it does look very uh, much to a, a regular Saigo. Beautiful blooms. And um, what was I talking about? This is my third one. Oh yeah, uh, that this one shows the spikes quite quickly. So I hope that this one uh, will be there. This is the Torje Blue. And we will have a look inside of the pot. This is a while since I did it, so I'm going to measure the Okay, yeah, it's a beautiful roots. I'm happy, I'm going to be happy. Psychos, oh, if you make a mistake, they can be quite unforgiving, <laughs> letting you know that you are doing something wrong. But on the other hand, once they are happy, they are really happy and they like, like I said, they're not afraid to make a root, I'm sorry, uh, then, but you can see I have uh, quite some beautiful roots coming out of the pot. That's obviously a good sign. And I grow this pumice in pumice. The smaller version, I have some lecca. Uh, I'm not a big fan of lecca, but sometimes I use it on the bottom of the pot so the smaller pumice doesn't fall out. And some Cintiq. I really um, have the idea that they like the Cintiq. They do not need uh, that much air around their roots. They, they, uh, they just don't need it. We can see here beautiful green roots. I'm so, so happy. I really, really am. Like I said, this one is very special to me. So, uh, but uh, let me see. I do not see a sign of a uh, spike yet. But this one, this one did rebloom for me um, earlier this year. So the last uh, season of growth. And so I think it should uh, will uh, will bloom again. Oh, I'm sorry, I did forget to. Uh, I'm sorry, you guys. I tried to avoid breaking the roots. I have it now in a pot. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. I'm sorry. And we are back again. Sorry, you guys. I did lower the camera a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was kind of hard to uh, put it in here because of those roots underneath there. So I think they are okay because it obviously stands in a uh, pot. As well, so I think the roots did find their way, but uh, that's the uh, downside if they do grow. Yeah, it, it happens, it's not the end of the world because it's settled in a pot, so it uh, will grow on. But I'm going to move this a little bit like this, and I do a few of them. I will not test all the reservoirs, otherwise, it will take too long. But to give you an idea, and especially in these videos, because it's a, a care collab, of course, and this is a very, very big, important. Um, yeah, subject care-wise for me, if when I started doing this, my orchids did do so much better, and especially my uh, no, all of them, also my cycles, I should say, almost said especially my cycles. That's not true because they do all of all of these uh, orchids do very well. I will put it on hold so we can see what I have in the reservoir. This is 139, that's perfect. I keep them underneath 200, 200 and more I flush. And with one flush I normally have the, uh, somewhere between 100 and 150, and that's okay. But 200 is too much, but this is beautiful. This is, uh, I, I really am happy with this. And the pH is as well beautiful. It is uh, 6.5, 6.57, but, oops, I'm sorry. Yes, I hope you can read it like now. So this is perfect. This is, uh, this is uh, yeah, what I like. So what will happen, I'm sorry, what, what will happen 
uh, within an, maybe a month or two or even three, this uh, the pH in this this reservoir will go down and down and down and down. And then I use some garden lime. I think it's it's uh, it's the same stuff as the garden lime you have in in uh, the U.S. But we don't have it. If you're from the Netherlands or Europe, this uh, this I I get it uh, from the Orchideehoeve. It's it's uh, basically the same stuff, and you need to have the gray gray one. That's with uh, calcium and magnesium. It's a powdery stuff. This powder is originally uh, meant to put in your orchid pot uh, when you have organic media like uh, bark or sphagnum moss, especially for bark, to keep it longer. Uh, yeah, at a certain pH, so longer, uh, good for your orchids, it, in, in a better better condition. How you want to put it? There is there. This stuff is meant for that. But it, uh, it it keeps your bark uh, healthier for your plants because basically it doesn't um, yeah maybe it slows down the the process of going down of your media a bit but it basically uh, pulls up the pH again and uh, that is what I wanted in my reservoir and this one can take for yeah at least three months so that saves me some some uh, testing. I test them every three months but I cannot test them every uh, two weeks or three weeks because otherwise I could flush and still I could even uh, flush it. It didn't make that much of a difference. Therefore I started to use this stuff as an experience and I'm so happy that I did it because it works so incredibly well. But it is the key and it's not, not their time for the measurements. I, I measured them uh, again soon every three months and I stick to that because that gives me a uh, overview uh, let's say in a year or two so if I now start to mess with it my system is basically uh, gone I will do it every three months so I get the right information so I can see uh, if it still works the same or if it starts to change after a year or something if I start to mess up after after one month my, I hope you get what I mean, my experience would be gone. So if I uh, do nothing with this, this is okay. If it was too low, obviously I would, I would uh, interfere. But for now, this is just for, for the care collab um, and for this video. So I put it back because everything was okay. And I hope I didn't break any roots. I will clean this uh, basket because this is wet. Probably this is a healthy plant because I have it for years, but you never know. So therefore I'm going to change this and uh, disinfect it with alcohol and I will be right back. So, and now I will get my second oldest one in this collection, in my collection. Uh, the tag is almost, the letters are going, are fading, but um, this is the Cygopetalum Lucendarf. I did repot this one on the 17th of September in 2019. This tag did fall off the, out of the pot, so I have it next to the pot because I don't want to damage any roots. But I will have it now in the screen. And again, beautiful roots. I hope you can see them coming underneath. Oh, my arm is in, in the way. Coming underneath there. Um, this, this is a pot standing on a tray or something. I think you can call it a tray. And I slowly will put it down now. And hopefully there's not a root there. It's a sort of tray you get when you uh, buy the self-watering uh, pots from Amazon. And I, I normally don't use them, but this was a kind of experience. And you can see we have all kinds of roots coming out of the, out of the pot of this cycle, but also on the other hand, on the other side, you can see a lot of roots going through those little holes and coming out on the, uh, underneath here in the, on the bottom. You can see one there, I think. Yes, there's a white one. And here. So yeah, I just keep it on this tray. <laughs> and I love it, don't get me wrong. But it's um, something that I have to cope with once I have to up pot this. I think I can go on for another year. Uh, let me turn this around a little bit like this. And uh, I will put up the camera a little bit. 
Uh, this is the newest growth. It's, I think it's still working on this new growth. So it has a little uh, room here. I hope if it puts out a new growth that the roots will, um, will go in a pot. I think I will be okay with that. But um, let me see. Yeah, I think it's, it's a little nubbin starting there. It's probably hard to see. So it's, it's now basically done growing this bulb. But uh, yeah, I think I can go on another year. And then I have to pot it up. But I wouldn't like to get this, uh, this pot uh, off this tray because I would lose all those roots. So I thought if this happens, maybe I need to pot it up in a bigger pot and just leave it in this little uh, pot and in this basket, but on this tray, I'm sorry. And um, But uh, that's for another video, but it's something to think about. And I like those little puzzles. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I have still some time to figure it out. If you have any good suggestions, please leave them now. No problemo. I love to hear uh, your thoughts on it. But this is probably the most beautiful, beautiful bulb so far. It's very thick. It's very shiny. Um, this is very happy. This one is was my second one, and you can see the difference uh, between this one and, and this one and this one. I was a little bit more experienced uh, at this time, and I think the architect is telling you that. But it's okay, that's how we learn, no problem, Mo. Um, yeah, and you can see it's a little bit shriveled here. That was when it was uh, starting to grow in self-watering, it had a new growth, it's this one. It's, you can see the difference with this one and this one. It's now settled in a pot. And I had it uh, to rebloom at least for once, maybe twice, I can't remember on top of my head. But the Lucendorf is probably m my personal favorite. I really, really love the blooms. And so far on my cycles, all the blooms are fragrant, so that's a big, big plus as well. But uh, yeah, we have quite, uh, quite some roots in uh, on this one as well. Healthy roots, so I'm very happy. Let's have a look at in that reservoir uh, one more time. Um, because I want to explain my growing method as good as I can and I don't know you can see my water is not There's there's some stuff growing in there. That's the I think the powder that I use. That's uh, some some seaweed and some uh, other bacterials. I will go over that in my uh, fertilizing uh, video uh, Todd mentioned Todd from Top Todd Tropicals mentioned that on my channel. It was a good uh, comment be very careful with growing hormones and I, uh, I think I am. I use them for also a year, probably uh, even longer, but only in very, very small amounts. So uh, probably five to 10 parts per million, maybe even less than five per watering that I use uh, hormones like uh, seaweed, kelp, just, just a little bit and I think uh, yeah, two times a month, something like that. So not not every watering, but uh, but I really enjoy like I, uh, enjoying uh, using them. I see absolutely a lot of difference. The orchids do make roots um, basically easily easier, and uh, also uh, they make quite quite a lot. I think so. It's I think it really is helping. But yeah, like you said small amounts, little bits, take it easy because you don't want to mess up uh, the orchid itself. It may uh, make uh, strange bulbs or very thin leaves, blooms are not healthy, bloom spikes, etc. You will, that, that can be happening if you are using too much hormones. So be aware of that. And this one so far, this first reading of the parts per million R is beautiful, once again not over 200 parts per million, 145, beautiful, nothing wrong with that. This is a bit higher, still okay, it's beautiful actually, nothing wrong with it. Uh, I'm sorry, I hope you can see it without the glare, <laughs> 6.83. pH wise I like, I, I, I try to uh, uh, go not above 7.5. 7.5 is quite high, but I always pH down my water like I, uh, uh, like they tell you when you start growing semi-hydroponic. So I still do that. I try to uh, mimic the system. 
by using that uh, garden lime stuff in my reservoirs so I pH it up and but I water the plants with a, a solution that is uh, with a pH around 6 um, but most of the times uh, around 6, 6.5 so that's uh, how I water. So I mimic the system of self, uh, self watering, semi hydroponic, uh, without a flushing. But this is it. This is uh, what I do. So and this is one I still working on uh, transferring and getting to grow in uh, in uh, self watering. It obviously uh, uh, not obviously. It has a reservoir already, so it has its water already. Um, but as you can see, like this leaf is very brown and it had quite a lot of them. Uh, luckily it, it, it keeps some leaves as, uh, as it looks now. It's a very new growth, this is still maturing. Probably will uh, be um, smaller. I don't think it will get the size of this one. But that's because they take it uh, quite hard when you start growing them in a different system. I try to be as gentle as I can with my orchids, but uh, especially uh, of course also with my, my uh, zygos, but I cannot avoid it, And um, but it will be fine, and you can see here there's a little green, green point sticking out, that's a new growth, and I also see a new growth starting there, um, yeah right, I think you can see it, there it is, that's a new growth as well, but you see kind of some dark, very dark leaves, that is the orca telling me that it wasn't happy but it's starting to get get happier I think but this is the hard time but you need to if you really want to grow them in self-watering semi-hydroponic they need to go through that stage it's horrible but I now know it will be okay in the end but when I first started changing them oh my god I thought I'm going to lose these orchids this is not going to work but yeah, changing them, them back to bark uh, or sphagnum moss, whatever you like, isn't helpful any uh, any uh, ways because they are starting to change and then they need to change back. It's probably even worse. So I thought, well, I'm just going to water them, let them be, and we will see. And that's basically what they need. They need a longer time to get started in, in self-watering, in my experience. I'm not going to take this out of its pot because it's very new to uh, this setup but I did repot it because of uh, these uh, new roots starting and yeah it was on the 24th of June so it's very new to this, to this setup and this, so this one has to go through that uh, uh, that, that period of, of getting used to uh, a new setup uh, it's, it's really just started but as well it will be okay but it's a little bit shriveled as you can see but uh, these two are very uh, fairly new to my uh, to my system uh, system yeah system as well as uh, in my growing space <laughs> like I promised uh, in the beginning of this video I would show you the window so this is uh, obviously the window behind the orchids uh, what I did, I did use the same shading paint uh, for this window as I used on my greenhouse. Uh, I have a video uh, where I put, where we put it on the greenhouse, or if you are interested. But this uh, shading paint, the, the beautiful thing of uh, of this paint is that as soon as it starts to rain, it uh, gets uh, translucent. So now it's filtering very strongly the, the daylight, the sunlight. At the moment I do not get sunlight in, so that probably you can see that those orchids are green and not black. <laughs> but when I started this video there was a video there was some sunlight coming in and the backlight is so strong that they, the camera makes them black. Yeah, that's that's the nice thing, and especially in uh, fall when we have duller days, and in winter when it's darker and it's probably raining more, uh, it starts to get translucent. So I can get as much daylight in um, as I, I probably want. Uh, but for the darker days, the drier, darker days, we have uh, of course as well. It stays uh, white. And it's very dark, so therefore I have, I think you call them shop lights, LED shop lights. Uh, if you don't forget, I will have a link in my, in my video description. I do not have the actual grow lights because those are just too expensive for me. I have so many orchids, I need so many lights. This, this, 
turned out to be quite expensive because of the amount of light but I use the cool light I am also a painter and like to draw and these lights I, I use as well when I am working at night on, on some artworks because I can see the colors as easily as in daylight in combination with that daylight coming in it works perfect so far so good they I, I have them quite recently in in this uh, this uh, orchid uh, room but I uh, I see they are start they're flowering they're growing nothing like nothing happened and I didn't I did mention it quite briefly when we have a look in the pots but uh, all of them so far I have are fragrant so that's for me it's also a big plus of these cycles I promise you guys I will have a uh, video up on how I feed them with a little bit of schedule so you have a general idea what I do and like always uh, feel free to ask uh, questions about this uh, maybe I did forget to mention something feel free to add it in the comments I really enjoyed it I see some people doing that I'm really happy with that because I sometimes just forget things very important things uh, but maybe a little sort of downside of the cycles is that they get those black spots on the leaves quite easily um, when I started growing them and not giving them the care that they needed I saw it a little bit more so I think they are doing better if we go slowly I don't want to try to make it dizzy towards this one this one is looks pretty pretty fine I think yeah, there are not that many spots. And, and I thought we need a little bit of a close-up of these beautiful blooms. Of course, they are there, out there to, for us to enjoy. I hope... No, I don't think my camera is focusing. Why won't you focus? Uh, yeah, I hope you, uh, you get a bit... It's a kind of um, a burgundy red with a yellow. That combination is beautiful. So Beautiful. that is it for now. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.